The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Name is Bruce, call sign G4ABX. Today we're going to build a filter. <laughs> if you want more details about this, then please have a look on the website uh, g4abx.co.uk and give you a bit more detail. Uh, but today we're actually going to build uh, the prototype of the filter. It's a pretty straightforward um, fifth order Butterworth high pass filter with a cutoff frequency calculated at uh, 1.6 megahertz. And it should give us, I don't know, by around about 1 megahertz, 18 to 20 dBs of attenuation. So it's a high pass filter. It, it kind of blocks the uh, broadcast area and, and should be great for, I don't know, 3.5 megs and above. Probably won't be brilliant for 1.8 megs, in other words, 160 meters, uh, because the uh, the, the rate of uh, cutoff is, is quite shallow and um, the center frequency of 1.6 megahertz I've chosen really just to kind of trap most of the medium wave broadcast interference. So the design is, is fairly straightforward. Um, 50 ohm input and output impedances. Um, essentially three capacitors, 3.3 uh, nanofarads, two of those, a one nanofarad and two inductors. And um, I'll put that out of the way. We're going to build it on this uh, huge piece <laughs> of single-sided FR4 um, plain board. <clears throat> I'm going to build this um, ugly style, as it were. Uh, not do anything really uh, too fantastic. But um, I will move that out of the way. And I will bring in uh, an, a pair of helping hands. These things are pretty important when you're, you're building anything small that you, you kind of can't support yourself. So, um, I've chosen um, BNC sockets to connect input and output because uh, pretty much all my QRP stuff is, uh, is BNC. Uh, these are a couple I've used on something else, but uh, I'll reuse them here. Uh, <laughs> reuse is the, is the main methodology, I think, for uh, amateur radio experimentation. Uh, the capacitors are going to get reused from something else, but the inductors are new. So let me just run through the components. So we have two um, inductors. These are uh, available to purchase, ready wound. Uh, they're from Tokyo. I'll uh, I'll put the details on my website so uh, you can find out where to purchase these. They cost in the UK around about 30 pence each. So uh, 0.3 of a UK pound. I only need two of them. Uh, the capacitors, they're, they're even cheaper. Um, Difficult to work out how they're marked. Uh, this one's marked 332. Um, I think a bag of 10 of these fellas um, off a supplier on eBay cost me about £1.50. So these are around 15 pence each. Um, this is a slightly more exotic uh, <laughs> one microfarad capacitor. This one happens to have a higher voltage rating. This is a a 3 kV voltage rated capacitor. We don't need anything like that. But um, I would normally like to run with 100 volt rated. I know these are 50 volt, but I'm sure they'll be fine for this design. The impedances are not high, and therefore the voltage levels should not be that great. OK, so there's the components. <clears throat> and essentially what we're going to do, uh, we're going to wire everything, stick everything to the board, um, wire between the components, uh, ugly style as it were, um, not worry too much about uh, the wonderful, uh, there's no printed circuit board here, so we're just literally going to solder stuff onto the printed onto the uh, laminate itself, and um, we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. So, uh, one moment while I just uh, power up the soldering iron. Okay, I'm back, soldering iron powered. Um, I suggest the first thing we do is to actually tin the area of the copper board where we're going to place our sockets and uh, we're, we're going to solder essentially the earth lugs of these sockets. We're not uh, at the moment worrying about anything else so we just need to apply a bit of uh, solder to tin this. I'll bring that into shot. Um, it, it's always advisable. <laughs> it's also advisable not to hold the darn thing with your fingers. 
because uh, uh, as I'm tinning the lug that's screwed to the body, uh, it might actually get quite warm. <laughs> right, so that's the uh, device tinned, and now I'll solder it to the laminate board. Need to apply a little bit of heat to this. Hold it till it's gone off. There we go. Um, I'll turn the helping hands around. <clears throat> These are a great investment. They, they cost literally a few pounds, I think five pounds or something like that. But uh, they do make life a lot easier. So I'll tin up this as well. Lots of smoke. And I'll solder that down to the laminate. OK, so that's the first part done. I'm just going to tidy up the hot connections, as it were, of the uh, BNC socket, because we'll be needing those shortly. Um, and now, really, the decision... Just let that cool down, because it, uh, it won't be cold. Uh, the decision really is is whether or not to simply um, place these inductors come so on the copper substrate um, maybe with a spot of super glue and then wire between them that's probably what I'll do uh, we're not really that worried at um, these sort of frequencies about keeping leads incredibly short Short is good, but uh, they don't need to be crazily short. So I think um, I think this is what we'll do. So I now need to just go and find a little bit of super glue. Super glue. <laughs> Other brands are available. Um, so I'm just going to put a spot of that on there and on there. And uh, we'll leave those uh, to, I think, uh, go off. Shouldn't take them very long. Right, so the task now is to, as it were, join the dots. So our circuit has um, two 3.3 nanofarads connecting to the top of the coils. Um, and between the coils is a 1 nanofarad. So these are the devices, uh, these are the components, capacitors I'm going to use uh, to connect to the top of the coils uh, from each of the BNC sockets. And uh, we just have a measure out the length that we need. It's probably going to be fine. Start firstly with the element that's going to give you greatest support. Uh, tin the lead of the component. And solder this to the hot terminal, as it were, <laughs> of the BNC connector. OK. Connection number one. Um, Let's do the same with the other capacitor. Just check the length. Yeah, same. So trim up the leads. Um, you will notice all kinds of horrible, nasty little bits of cut wire, salted wire. So don't forget to clean up. Um, I'm fortunate in that I, I have a shack uh, that isn't in the house, and therefore I have a little more leeway. <laughs> as to when exactly I clean up, but generally, after I've built anything, uh, cleaning up is uh, is really important. Right then, let's solder this capacitor on. OK, that's that done. Uh, now we'll dress the the capacitors so that they are in contact with the pin that we want to solder them to, which is here. 
at the top. Um, I'll earth these uh, with just a little bit of uh, wire, which I should probably crop off this component here. Um, I'll use the wire just to uh, earth the other side of the components. I don't want to cut them too short, though, because I want to tuck this down. Um, some sort of enclosure for this uh, module would be quite useful. It, it'll fit inside um, a tiny little piece of plastic grain pipe. Um, I don't know, 15 mil. This this board is 10 mil. Um, so if we look at uh, if we look at the overall height of this, it's 20 mil. So you probably get this whole thing in a a 20 mil. Uh, diameter inside diameter piece of drain pipe that's probably quite a plastic drain pipe that's really quite a good way to do it um, so now then this is the one nanofarad which is the coupling capacitor that runs between the top of the two inductors uh, again tin its leads and tin the top of the two inductors. You have to be a little bit careful. You don't hold um, the soldering iron on for too long, otherwise you might melt the uh, plastic former that's holding the wire on the inductor, which would not be great. Um, don't try and do two things with your soldering iron still in your hand. <laughs> Otherwise, I guarantee at some point you'll burn yourself. So uh, put the soldering iron back in its in its place while you dress the other leads to be precisely where you want them to be. Okay, so that should do. And then Simply apply solder to the joint. Job done. So we now have the um, take this. Uh, in with the BNC through a 3.3 nanofarad capacitor to the top of the inductor. There's a coupling capacitor of 1 nanofarads between the tops of the two inductors. These two inductors are identical, 3.3 microhenry nominally. Uh, and there's a 3.3 microfarad capacitor between the top of this inductor to the BNC socket. So all we're left to do is to earth the other side of the cable of the uh, inductors uh, to the substrate and then the substrate essentially forms the ground plane between the outer of the two uh, BNC connectors. Right, let's uh, tin an area of the board that we're going to use. That'll do fine for one and another one here. Right, bearing in mind you're going to be holding the wire, I suggest <laughs> Again, use yourself, use a pair of uh, pliers and we'll solder that one there. Chop that off. There I am doing what I suggested you didn't do, which was hold soldering iron and use cutters at the same time. Get rid of the excess, solder that one on there. Now we want to dress these essentially earth connections up to the inductors and we can probably just wrap that once around the pin. Trim off the excess in a moment, do the same with that one. that around the pin too. Uh, 
Um, I'm just going to trim off the excesses here. They don't need to be a, a there doesn't need to be a good mechanical connection here, but uh, as I got a bit of spare wire and solder one and two. And there we go. There is our uh, BCI filter completed. Um, I've already built a, I built the equivalent up uh, on a slightly bigger piece of board yesterday and the results of that are up on the website. But uh, there we go, that is the completed uh, BCI filter. And for those of you with um, software defined radios that maybe don't have brilliant front ends, um, there is a tendency today to input directly to the analog to digital converter. That gives a much broader bandwidth of course for the input of the SDR enables it to cover much more frequency range but the downside is if you've got very strong say medium wave stations not far from you the tendency is for those things to overpower uh, the frequencies that you're trying to listen to so what this does this is called a high pass filter this essentially eliminates or dramatically reduces the power of those broadcast filters so I, I will now run this up on the um, computer. I'll run it with my uh, VNA, um, which is the uh, network analyzer, and we'll just make sure that we get the correct plot. But uh, that's that's it done. And uh, as you can see, that can quite easily... I mean, you could even just put a piece of heat shrink sleeving over it and um, shrink the whole thing, uh, and that'll be robust enough. That's not going to go anywhere. Uh, unless you tread on it, um, you're probably not going to do this any damage. So I hope you found that useful, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and um, I'll have more videos coming out in the not-too-distant future. Thank you very much indeed. And I hope you all have a great day. 73. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.